All right, next question is, what is your expectation on Intel's new GPU? Are they going to flop, or do you think they could compete to a certain level with NVIDIA and AMD? So I think this is a good opportunity to revisit this because we've, uh, we've been asked this question in prior Q&As, but we haven't had really any information on what Intel's GPUs are going to look like. But then in the past couple of weeks, we've had Intel's Architecture Day. So they have actually disclosed at least some information on what the GPU is going to look like. So we know the sort of general layout where they're going to have their own effectively tensor core equivalent in there, which they're calling uh, their matrix engines, which all form part of this new XE core. We know how many of those cores are going to be, sort of validating those 512 execution unit rumors. So we're sort of getting a closer and closer picture of what Intel's GPUs are going to provide. And we know that they're coming in the first quarter of next year. So yeah, I think most of the expectations, like I expect Intel will be able to make a GPU that works perfectly fine and has good performance. But I think most of my expectations that I'm interested to see is more on the software side of things. Um, they've had driver issues with the their XE integrated graphics for things like their CPUs, particularly on the mobile side, where just in some games, because games haven't been optimized for their, that new architecture, you know, there can be graphical glitches and other issues. But Intel's lately been talking about putting massive software efforts into improving their drivers, making it easier for developers. They've got XCSS coming out. They obviously needed a DLSS competitor. So I think my expectations for their competitiveness have sort of gotten a bit better in the past couple of weeks once we've seen some of those disclosures. How, how do you see them shaping up based on what you've seen so far? Yeah, sort of similar thoughts and feelings about it. I mean, ultimately, my guess, my even if you want to call it an educated guess, my opinion on this is kind of worthless because if you look at something like RDNA, yep. it's like when... AMD announced RDNA, it was like, oh, okay, is it going to be another Vega? Will it be, you know, we got the 5700 XT, which was a good mid-range card. So sort of beat our expectations there. But then RDNA 2, it was like, you know, are they really going to make the necessary step with that? And, you know, we had a long history of this company making Radeon GPUs, and it was still a kind of an unknown how good RDNA 2 would be. And we heard rumors that it'll be competing with that. Uh, when we saw the, I think... When we saw the RTX 3080 and we saw the benchmarks and the re reviews went live, there were so many seasoned reviewers that took to social media and were like, the game's over, Radeon's dead, there's no way they're going to compete with this. Like, there was a lot of really known reviewers that were sort of saying stuff like that. And we were sort of sitting back going, we weren't saying that, but we're like, wow, that's that's a tall order. That's going to be difficult for them to, uh, to meet that. And they did. To our surprise, you know, like, I mean, yeah, ray tracing is not there, but rasterization performance, they are right there uh, as close as they've been in a long time. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is we knew a lot more about the Radeon situation than we do with Intel's situation. So it's anyone's guess as to how this will turn out. But I think, yeah, there's going to be some rocky inroads for them for sure. There's a lot of things they need to establish and overcome before they're a true competitor. But they have the yeah, money. <laughs> they could just cut. They have the money, yeah, but that's, right. that's only, you know, money, uh, while that's certainly very helpful, there's also the whole time thing, um, getting the, the products out there, getting people buying them, using them, ironing out bugs, you know, getting yourself established in the ecosystem. There, there's plenty of work to be done. But yeah, as you say, they've they've got the, the money to make it happen. But yeah, that we've seen plenty of companies with plenty of money try to get into certain, you know, ecosystems and they've just failed. So yeah, that's right. I don't think Intel will fail. I'm not suggesting that. I just think it's going to be, yeah, a, a multi generation journey, which I'm sure they're aware, aware of. Yeah, and I think, I think it's good to see that a lot of people, at least you know, just general consumers, people talking about the rumors online, are, are not expecting Intel to have like a 3090 or 6900 XT competitor uh -huh. straight True. away. Because I think if you were expecting yeah. that, then maybe you're setting yourself up for disappointment because. Just judging by the rumors and you know how difficult it would be to straight off the bat compete with the flagship GPUs of today that have been worked on and iterated on for years and years now, you know, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But certainly, if Intel could come out with even like you know another 5700 XT type product, which gives you that bang for buck experience in the mid range, then that could still be a really successful product. So, Absolutely. at least that's sort of where my expectations, or at least where I'm 
maybe it's not an expectation, but more of a, a hope that that is where that sort of product ends up being. Sort of offering that 6700 XT 3070 like performance, an affordable price with all the software features that it needs to compete. Obviously, though, one of the one of the really interesting things that I think that will will play out is, you know. AMD has obviously got a much lower market share than Nvidia. You know, most of the time yeah. it's between you know twenty to thirty percent AMD, and the rest Nvidia in the discrete you know GPU space. But AMD is able to get the optimization that they need for their GPUs with a low market share because of the consoles. So by being in the PlayStation Five, the Xbox Series X, and seven years now of prior consoles, developers already have to work with their architecture in some way. So while they may not optimize games for a GPU that has 30% market share on PC, they're kind of forced into doing it on the consoles. Intel mm-hmm. doesn't have that advantage. So yeah. it's inter- I, I, that's a thing that I will find very interesting to see. You know, If Intel has, say, like a 5% market share, how many developers are going to be optimizing for their GPUs? Does Intel need to start forking out loads of money to get developers to do it because they can't, you know, they're not in consoles, they can't really fall in that direction? Again, lots of stuff to play out there. It would be very interesting to see what happens. Yeah, it's a very ambitious project with, I'm sure, ambitious goals. And yeah, Intel has a lot of money, but that doesn't mean they're going to throw infinite money at making yep. this work. I'm sure there's a budget to make it happen. And if they fall short of that, it may be a failed project. So yeah, yeah fingers crossed they can pull it off because a 5700 XT-like product in the current market would just be what everyone needs, really. And it's no better time for someone probably to jump in and offer something half decent because I think people are willing to compromise on stuff like maybe driver support and things like that and deal with a few hiccups if they can get something that performs. Well, basically like the 5700 XT did, the 5700 XT situation all over again where a bit of a rocky start there, wasn't the most polished product, that's for sure, at least for a lot of people. But, you know, the price was quite good compared to what you could get from the competing brand. Mm. Yeah, and obviously the GP, the gaming GP is kind of... You know, as always, a byproduct of their much more ambitious plan for the data center. So, you know, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. if this first generation GP or the next generation or the next generation fails, uh, if Intel is starting to see success in that data center space, then potentially sure. the gaming GPUs could still survive and still get iterated upon because they're still developing those architectures for this, the data center. So, mm-hmm. again, <laughs> there's so many, it, it's such an interesting. Um, such, I'm so interested about what's going to happen, and it all starts in the, the first quarter of next year, so lots to look forward to in 2022, yeah. 